When did the Roman Empire start, and why did it end? Beginning in the 7th century BC, ancient Rome expanded from a small town on the Tiber River in central Italy into the empire that at its height controlled the majority of continental Europe, Britain, a large portion of Western Asia, Northern Africa, and the Mediterranean islands. The widespread usage of Romantic languages like Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian derive from Latin. The present Western alphabet and calendar, and the establishment of Christianity as a significant world religion, are just a few of the numerous legacies of Roman domination. Following the rise and fall of Julius Caesar in the first century BC, Rome, which had been a republic for 450 years, was transformed into an empire. In contrast, the Roman Empire's decline and fall by the 5th century AD was one of the most dramatic implosions in the history of human civilizations. This contrasts with the Roman Empire's lengthy and glorious rule of its first emperor, Augustus, which inaugurated a golden age of peace and prosperity. How long did the Roman Empire last? In today's video, we are going to talk about ancient Rome. Let's dive right in. Romulus and Remus, twin sons of Mars, the god of war, established Rome in 753 BC. The twins were saved by a she-wolf after being abandoned to drown in a basket on the Tiber by a king of the adjacent Alba Longa. They survived to overthrow the king and create their city on the banks of the river in 753 BC. Romulus, after whom Rome was named, became the first king after murdering his brother. A succession of non-hereditary kings from the Sabine, Latin, and Etruscan earlier Italian cultures came after. Romulus, Numa Pompilius, Tullus Hostilius, Ancus Martius, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, Tarquin the Elder, Servius Tullius, and Tarquinius Superbus, or Tarquin the Proud, are the seven mythological kings of Rome, 534 to 510 BC. While they were referred to as Rex or King in Latin, all the kings after Romulus were elected by the Senate. Rome's monarchy came to an end in 509 BC with the fall of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. Its seventh ruler, who was described by ancient historians as being cruel and despotic in contrast to his beneficent forebears. According to legend, a popular rebellion started after the king's son allegedly raped the noblewoman, Lucretia. Whatever the reason, Rome changed from a monarchy to a republic, a system that was based on the idea of property of the people, or res publica. The seven hills of Rome are Esquiline, Palatine, Aventine, Capitoline, Quirinal, Viminal, and Caelian. Rome was founded on these hills. Two consuls who are yearly chosen to office received the monarch's authority. They were the army's main commanders as well. The magistrates were chosen from the Senate, which was predominated by patricians, or the descendants of the original senators from the time of Romulus, even though they were chosen by the people. The long conflict between the patricians and the plebeians, the common people, which culminated in some political power for the plebeians after years of patricians' concessions, including their political bodies, the tribunes, which had the power to introduce or veto legislation, characterized politics in the early Republic. The first Roman legal system, known as the Twelve Tables, was written on twelve bronze tablets and placed in the Roman Forum about 450 BC. These laws served as the foundation for all subsequent Roman civil law, and addressed matters of judicial procedure, civil rights, and property rights. Real political power in Rome was concentrated by the Senate by roughly 300 BC, which, at the time, only included members of affluent patrician and plebeian families. The Roman state expanded dramatically, both in size and power throughout the early Republic. Even though the Gauls stormed and burned Rome in 390 BC, the Romans recovered under the military hero Camillus. And by 264 BC, 
they had taken control of the entire Italian peninsula. The great city-state of Carthage in northern Africa was the opponent of Rome in a series of conflicts known as the Punic Wars. Rome completely dominated Sicily, the western Mediterranean, and a large portion of Spain after the first two Punic Wars. A third Punic War was fought around 149 to 146 BC. The Romans conquered, destroyed, and sold into slavery the city of Carthage, turning a portion of northern Africa into a Roman province. Rome expanded its power in the east at the same time, overthrowing King Philip V of Macedonia in the Macedonian Wars, and transforming his nation into a new Roman province. Rome's military victories paved the way for the society's cultural development, because the Romans gained tremendously from contact with their highly developed civilization like the Greeks. Around 240 BC, Greek classics were translated into Latin to create the earliest works of Roman literature. The Romans later adopted much of Greek philosophy, art, and religion. Make sure to subscribe to History Flicks and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future history updates. Under the weight of the expanding empire, Rome's intricate political structures started to fall apart, ushering in a period of unrest and violence. As affluent landowners drove out small farmers from public lands, the wealth gap grew, and only the more privileged classes were given access to the government. Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus reform efforts in 133 BC and 123 to 22 BC respectively, and other attempts to solve these societal issues resulted in the reformers' murders at the hands of their opponents. Gaius Marius was the first of many warlords, who would rule over Rome in the late Republic. Gaius Marius was a commoner whose military prowess propelled him to the rank of consul for the first of six years in 107 BC. Around 82 BC, Sulla, a fellow general, became the military dictator. By 91 BC, Marius was fighting off attacks from his rivals, notably Sulla. Following Sulla's retirement, one of his erstwhile followers, Pompey, temporarily held the position of consul before leading victorious military operations against Mithridian armies in Asia and Mediterranean pirates. During this time, Marcus Tullius Cicero, who was elected consul in 63 BC, is renowned for having one of Rome's best oratory skills and for successfully foiling the plot of patrician Catiline. When the victorious Pompey returned to Rome, he formed an uneasy alliance known as the First Triumvirate, which the wealthy Marcus Licinius Crassus, who suppressed a slave rebellion led by Spartacus in 71 BC, and another rising star in Roman politics, Gaius Julius Caesar. Caesar went back to Rome to run for the consulship in 59 BC. After achieving military success in Spain, in 58 BC, Caesar was given control of three prosperous provinces in Gaul, as a result of his alliance with Pompey and Crassus. He then went out to colonize the rest of the country for Rome. The triumvirate was broken when Pompey's wife, Julia, Caesar's daughter, passed away in 54 BC, and Crassus was killed in combat with Parthia, modern-day Iran, the following year. In 53 BC, Pompey took over as the single consul when traditional Roman politics fell into disarray. Due to Caesar's superior military prowess in Gaul and his growing fortune, Pompey and his Senate supporters worked together to gradually undermine Caesar. Caesar and one of his legions crossed the Rubicon, a river separating Cisalpine Gaul from Italy, in 49 BC. Caesar became the undisputed ruler of Rome for the rest of his life in 45 BC, after his conquest of Italy sparked a civil war. Less than a year later, Julius Caesar was murdered, March 15, 44 BC, by a group of his enemies, led by the Republican nobles Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius. In the Second Triumvirate, which included ex-consul Lepidus, Consul Mark Antony and Octavian, Caesar's great-nephew and adopted heir. 
work together to defeat Brutus and Cassius. With Octavian leading the western provinces, Antony the east, and Lepidus Africa, tensions developed by 36 BC, and the triumvirate soon dissolved. In the Battle of Axium in 31 BC, Octavian triumphed against the armies of Antony and Queen Cleopatra of Egypt, who is also thought to have been Julius Caesar's former love interest. After this humiliating loss, Antony and Cleopatra killed themselves. Octavian was the only ruler of Rome in all of its provinces by 29 BC. He made sure to appear as though the Roman Republic's political institutions had been restored, while retaining complete control of himself to avoid suffering Caesar's fate. Octavian adopted the name Augustus in 27 BC, becoming the first emperor of Rome. After a century of strife and corruption, Augustus's administration helped Rome recover its morale and bring in the famed Pax Romana, two complete centuries of tranquility and prosperity. He oversaw several social changes, scored many military triumphs, and allowed development of Roman literature, art, architecture, and religion. With the help of his large army and developing cult of loyalty to the emperor, Augustus ruled for 56 years. The Senate worshipped Augustus after his death, starting a long-standing custom of deification for popular emperors. Tiberius, 14 to 37 AD, Caligula, 37 to 41 AD, and Claudius, 41 to 54 AD, who is best known for leading his army to conquer Britain, were all members of Augustus's dynasty. The last in the series was Nero, 54 to 68 AD, whose indulgences emptied the Roman treasury, brought about his downfall, and ultimately resulted in his suicide. In the turbulent year following Nero's demise, four emperors assumed the throne. The fourth, Vespasian, 69 to 79 AD, and his successors, Titus and Domitian, were known as the Flavians. They made an effort to restrain the excesses of the Roman court, to restore Senate authority, and to advance the welfare of the people. With his management of the relief efforts following the catastrophic Vesuvius eruption, which destroyed the towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii, Titus, 79 to 81 AD, won the respect of his people. Another golden era in Roman history began with Nerva's reign, 96 to 98 AD, who was chosen by the Senate to succeed Domitian. During this time, four emperors, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius took the throne peacefully and succeeded one another by adoption rather than hereditary succession. Trajan's conquest of the kingdoms of Dacia, present-day northwest Romania, 98 to 117 AD, and Parthia resulted in the greatest territorial expansion of Rome's frontiers in recorded history. His successor Hadrian, 117 to 138 AD, continued his predecessor's efforts of maintaining internal stability and enacting administrative changes, while also fortifying the empire's borders, famously erecting Hadrian's Wall in modern-day England. Rome was peaceful and prosperous under Antoninus Pius, 138 to 161 AD. But Marcus Aurelius's rule, 161 to 180 AD, was marked by warfare, including wars with Parthia and Armenia, and the invasion of Germanic tribes from the north. Marcus defied convention and appointed his 19-year-old son Commodus as his heir. After falling ill and passing away close to the battleground at Vindobana, Vienna, this was against the non-hereditary succession custom. The era of the Roman emperors came to a dismal conclusion thanks to Commodus's depravity and incapacity from 180 to 192 AD. Another civil war that was won by Lucius Septimius Severus, 193 to 211 AD, was precipitated by his death at the hands of his ministers. Rome had a cycle of almost perpetual warfare during the third century. The throne was occupied by a total of 22 emperors, 
several of whom perished violently at the hands of the soldiers who had driven them to power. As a result of ongoing German and Parthian warfare, as well as Goth assaults over the Aegean Sea, external challenges afflicted the empire and diminished its wealth. The reign of Diocletian, 284-305 AD, temporarily restored peace and prosperity in Rome, but at a high cost to the unity of the empire. Diocletian and Maximian jointly held the title of Augustus, Emperor, and they split the authority into the so-called Tetrarchy, Rule of Four. Diocletian and Maximian's assistants and designated successors were two generals named Galerius and Constantius. Diocletian and Galerius dominated the Eastern Roman Empire, while Maximian and Constantius assumed control in the West. After Diocletian and Maximian left office, the stability of this arrangement significantly deteriorated. In the ensuing power conflicts, Constantine, the son of Constantius, emerged as the sole emperor of a united Rome in 324 AD. He transferred the Roman capital to Byzantium in Greece, which he dubbed Constantinople. At the Council of Nicaea in 325, Constantine declared Christianity, then a marginal Jewish sect, the state religion of Rome. The illusion of Roman unity under Constantine was short-lived, and 30 years after his passing, the Eastern and Western empires were once more split. The Eastern Roman Empire, afterward known as the Byzantine Empire, would continue to fight Persian invaders despite this, and would mainly hold for centuries to come. A completely different narrative unfolded in the West, where the empire was beset by internal strife and external threats, particularly from Germanic tribes now established within the empire's borders, such as the Vandals, whose capture of Rome gave rise to the term Vandalism, and was steadily losing money due to constant warfare. Rome's bloated empire finally caused it to crumble, and it lost each of its provinces one by one. Britain around 410 AD, Spain and Northern Africa around 430 AD. Around 450 AD, Attila and his vicious Huns attacked Gaul in Italy, further stumbling the empire. A Germanic prince by the name of Oddwalker took charge of the Roman army in Italy in September 476 AD. Oddwalker's forces crowned him king of Italy after toppling Romulus Augustus, the final Western emperor putting an unjust conclusion to the protracted, turbulent history of ancient Rome. The Roman Empire had completely collapsed. Roman engineering and architectural advancements continue to influence modern society. Roman aqueducts, which were created in 312 BC, allowed towns to grow because they transported water to urban areas, enhancing cleanliness and public health. A modernized version of an original Roman aqueduct is still used to supply water to Rome's Fountain of Trevi. Some Roman aqueducts could convey water up to 60 kilometers or 37 miles from their source. Ancient structures like the Colosseum and Roman Forum are still standing strong today, thanks in part to Roman cement and concrete. Roman arches, also known as segmented arches, improved on prior arches to create sturdy bridges and buildings that dispersed weight uniformly. Roman highways, which were the best roadways in the ancient world, allowed the Roman Empire, which at its height, covered more than 1.7 million square miles to remain linked. They incorporated seemingly modern inventions like drainage and mile markers. By 200 BC, more than 50,000 miles of roads had been constructed, many of which are still in use today. If you like this, subscribe to our channel and explore more history and mystery with us. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to let us know what you would like to see on History Flicks and what you think about this video in the comments section. If you like this one, check out our others on History Flicks. I will see you in the next one. Until then, Goodbye.